Hello and welcome to another Hun's History Nest podcast, where history is enjoyed and salvaged forever. Hello, Parcells Middle School. This podcast is about President Monroe's era of good feelings. The Era of Good Feelings has this title for an assortment of different reasons. Primarily, as seen here, the Era of Good Feelings is due to the fact of this sweeping nationalism, as highlighted, which came came about as a result of the second victory against Great Britain in a war. But this one was far different. This one was done with the United States having been a victor all on our own. And... This is going to bring about a tremendous amount of popularity, especially for the Democratic Republican Party. In the presidential election over here on the right in 1816, you're going to notice that we do have a Federalist in the running, and that person is Rufus King. However, the results are very lopsided. The Democratic Republicans will have a sweeping victory here, 183 electoral votes to 34 for the Federalists. And this ultimately will be the last time the Federalists will ever have any type of presidential prominence. The presidential election, which will come about four years afterwards in the election of 1820 over here on the left, this one is going to be sort of a milestone. You'll notice here that the only opposition is another Democratic Republican, John Quincy Adams. He only obtains one electoral vote. And as the story goes, William Plumer uh, deliberately voted for John Quincy Adams against whom his electors told him or instructed him to vote for to just preserve the unanimous victory of George Washington many years prior. The bottom line is this is an era that is being kicked off where there's tremendous loyalty to one's nation. The United States has a strong, overwhelming sense of pride, and we're going to see a bit of sectionalism here, but that sectionalism really will come to an end. And the only sectionalism that really came about was the Hartford Convention, which was just prior to the presidential election here. And it really had a tremendously negative effect on Rufus King, the Federalists, and really uh, we will cease to see any sectionalism at all until really uh, the Civil War coming about. A bit uh, will come about with tariffs, as we'll see in the few moments, but otherwise uh, this is a sweeping time for the Democratic-Republican Party. One of the great comp- accomplishments of the Democratic-Republican Party actually comes at the hands of Andrew Jackson. And President Andrew Jackson uh, is fundamental in the obtaining of the adams onus Treaty, which ultimately gave us Florida. And really, to be honest, uh, General Jackson went completely against what his instructions were. He basically went down and by force um, took over the state of Florida, all under this um, guise of a Seminole War, which was a continuation of the Creek War in the War of 1812. But ultimately, he used this uh, to take over Florida. Uh, John Quincy Adams ultimately sort of smoothed things over with the Spanish who own Florida, and ultimately we acquire Florida in the adams onus Treaty. For the Democratic-Republican parties, really the only political competition still remains in the U.S. Supreme Court, and Chief Justice John Marshall remains there, a uh, staunch Federalist, and he's going to use the McCullough versus Maryland court case to sort of finally prove that um, Alexander Hamilton's beliefs were absolutely true. This court case ultimately proves that Alexander Hamilton and his loose interpretation of the U.S. Constitution was all along absolutely correct. And this court case, McCullough, who is the president of the National Bank, uh, he will basically find himself... um, defeating the state of Maryland, and it will be deemed that the United States Bank uh, 